There we go. I've got audio this time. Let me try that again. Hey, everybody. Welcome to John Park's workshop. I'm John Park. This is my workshop, and uh, we're going to build some stuff today. And let me turn off my external audio. There we go. All right, so uh, check in, a little roll call over on Discord and YouTube chat. Let me know if you can see and hear everything just fine. Hey, Philip Moyer, Noah and Pedro over in YouTube chat. Hi, everyone, Matambale. All right, that's great. So uh, we're broadcasting out to Twitch, to YouTube, to Periscope, and where else? Facebook today. Uh, so for everyone who tuned in last week, uh, apologies for technical difficulties. Uh, I've tuned some settings and worked with Noah and Pedro and PT on some, uh, some ideal settings for my broadcast that should help. And uh, one thing that Noah and Pedro and I were talking about is that sometimes playing back movie files can lead to uh, weird behavior, which I think is what happened in my case. I got stuck on a loop of a video and Wirecast crashed. So uh, I don't have a video to play this week. We're just going to do a straight up live build, so uh, we'll avoid that problem. Um, let's see. The other thing is in setting up, let me grab my little switcher, my camera switcher, in setting up for this broadcast and uh, tuning my settings. Pull this cable over here. Um, remember my button box that I built a while ago to switch. So I've changed the setup and uh, instead of fully preset layouts, now I can switch between uh, different, oh, let me set my cursor in here so it pays attention. So I can set up uh, different background layers one, two, and three. Ooh, there's a little preview of what we're doing. And different foreground layers. Oh my gosh, another preview. Uh, so that'll be, I think, helpful for uh, setting this up. So let's go to, let's see, is it that one? Yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. That's the Atari uh, CX40 joystick. And that's the name of the joystick that shipped with the Atari 2600. Uh, the original one, actually, I looked on Wikipedia. I didn't have that in the top of my head. Uh, the original joystick was the CX-10, and then it was uh, upgraded. I, I forget what the changes were, fairly minor changes, and uh, it's been a, a pretty classic joystick ever since. So what we're going to do today is let me switch over to a uh, workshop camera over here and set my switcher back, so I'll be hanging out mostly over here. And we're going to... Have a look inside of one of these. Let me give you the camera there you can look at. So we're going to take a look at the insides of this, and we are going to remove the cord and instead replace it with an NRF52 blue, uh, blue fruit or Bluetooth feather. So the NRF52 is uh, one of the newer uh, feathers that we have. It's a newer blue fruit or Bluetooth chip. Uh, from Nordic Semiconductor, uh, and I really like it. So I, I feel like it's, uh, I've just played with it a little bit, but I like the, the board a lot, um, and it has uh, some really nice, robust Bluetooth. It seems to pair really clean, and so what I want to do is turn this into a joystick that we can uh, use for, let me switch over to this camera. Yeah, it's going to be me getting, getting used to <laughs> all my buttons. Let's see, is that the workshop? There we go. Um, we're going to turn that into wireless uh, iCade standard Bluetooth joystick um, and pair it up with an iPad so I can play some classic 2600 games and other arcade games that use the iCade standard. Um, and then I think in the future I'd also like to set it up to use it on a RetroPie. So, uh, You'll notice this joystick has essentially five switches. It's got four directions and it's got a button. So that's pretty minimal uh, for a lot of people who want to play from the couch. When they set up a joystick, they'll add a lot of extra buttons to it or use something that already started with a lot of buttons. Um, but I'm going to just use this right now at least for uh, iPad. So I'm going to have it right there real close to hit settings, but then I'll be able to play Pac-Man with the proper proper-ish Atari-style joystick. Um, so I'm going to log in to my little laptop over here so that I can look at the chat. Okay, video and audio okay. Thank you. 
Seagrover. Did we work this out last time, how we say your name? I think Seagrover. I hope Seagrover. Um, and, all right, I'm going to stick to that chat for now because I don't have the YouTube one up there. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the guts of this thing. Let's see if I can give you, um, I'm going to open it up here in this camera view, but then we'll take a look a little closer in my um, little down shooter. So down shooter, there we go. So that's this one, this one here. Ooh, that's weird, huh? Okay, so uh, this joystick has just four Phillips head screws. Pretty easy to open up. I remember getting my Atari 2600 when I was a kid. It was probably like 1979 or so. I think that was the Christmas they came out, or 78. Um, and it was one of the first devices that I remember taking apart and fixing these joysticks. Like a year down the road, we started to have some uh, poor contacts on them. And... So I just cleaned them up a little bit, I think, and re-crimped the little terminals that you'll see in a second here. So there we go. All we have in the top here is four little tabs that rock and press four little buttons. And then there's a button usually right here. That, ooh, this one's kind of scummy. I got this one off of eBay. Uh, I haven't tested it, so we're, we're going to hope this one works. I have a, a backup just in case that I know does work. Um, but yeah, when you buy stuff off of eBay, you get to also buy someone's dust. So I hope that's not Uncle Charlie's ashes or something. Uh, so here we have, this is the uh, fire button, and it's got a little spring in it, and it presses down on this contact. Uh, so here's the PCB. Let me switch to a full... Um, Full camera view there. And what I'm going to do is pop the PCB out and lay it flat. And while doing that, I'm going to pull the cable through a little bit too. Okay, so that's it. That's the CX40 PCB. Uh, there's a little film of plastic over the top for. Uh, protection and to keep this from corroding, I think. And then there's these little bubble dome buttons that uh, when you push them, they make a contact. And so you can see the contacts. This is like the world's fattest PCB. It's really easy to see what's going on. It's kind of cool if you're um, ever explaining to someone what a PCB is or how it works, uh, or if, if there's a kid who's like, how does this, how does this joystick work? This one's a lot more um, obvious versus taking apart an Xbox controller or something like that. So uh, what we have is there's a uh, ground, and you can see there's this black wire here. This ground plane goes everywhere and has little, uh, in, in four cases, it has a little um, branch that is underneath this bubble. So this little branch, little branch, uh, and... In the case of the fire button, it's not the branch, it's sort of the outer uh, part of, of the contact. And then each of the uh, directional buttons, so this is the right direction button, uh, has a contact. And so when that direction is hit on the joystick, it's bridging the, the connection between this ground, flowing all the way over here. and inside that little branch and this outer part. So that's how it works all the way around. I noticed this one actually is coming off a little bit um, on one side. So if we have any problems with it, that's going to be a place to, to come in and maybe re-adhere uh, this laminate down, maybe with some Kapton tape or something like that. But uh, So Next thing we'll do is I have diagrammed these. So I've got, I'll show you the fritzing diagram in a second, but I've got a diagram of these wires. So we're going to pay attention to these uh, colors, this brown, white, black, blue, green, orange. And we're going to keep that in our um, 
uh, final circuit. Uh, and in fact, let me show you right now, I'll head over to my main computer and show you the fritzing diagram and how we're going to connect this up to fire those buttons uh, with the microcontroller instead uh, of, or ha I'd rather have those buttons uh, talk to the microcontroller rather than directly to a game console. Um, so let's see, I'm going to head over to fritzing here. And so you can see uh, I made a little image of, I couldn't find this, this PCB as vector art anywhere, so I, I drafted one. And I'll, I'll post that up with my um, learn guide on this in case anyone wants this. It's not a full fritzing object or anything like that. It's just a, a PNG with some transparency that I was able to bring in. Um, and so here's that original order, brown, white, black, blue, green, orange. And what those correspond to, uh, I have indicated in my software. We'll look at that, the Arduino code, in a second. But we have uh, white here going to pin 15 on a microcontroller. This is the feather, NRF52 feather. And white corresponds to up. So those are kind of three things we need to know is the, the color of the wire, the direction or fire button on the joystick, and then what pin we're going to use on the microcontroller. Uh, so here we have, uh, I actually just before the show rearranged these so they were easier to plug in. So essentially, you can see I've routed these around for visual clarity, but they kind of go directly across um, other than the ground, which is on this side. But I've got this basically a row of wires that corresponds to this row of wires. Makes life a little easier than crisscrossing them around, which is what I had originally. Um, and then this, I realized um, I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> this is not what I intended. So what I want to do is have a battery. Um, and I guess I could bring that in right here. Let's go search for a LiPo and fritzing. Uh, and, whoops. OK, so I'm going to rotate this. OK, so that's normally how you use one of these LiPos with the feathers. Just plug it in uh, to this JST connector. And then you can uh, charge it by plugging in a USB uh, cable. It has a little charging circuit on there. Uh, I don't want to cut any holes in the joystick. I'd like to keep this um, intact. Just see if I can and, and have a cleaner build. Uh, and so I didn't want to cut a hole out for this uh, USB. So I'm going to run a, a little breakout, uh, micro USB breakout board that we have here. And it's uh, just going to be used for powering the uh, charging circuit. So this switch is what I've done wrong. With this switch right now, I can just turn on and off charging. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Actually, what I want to do is use the switch to turn on and off the battery to the whole thing. Um, so let's fix that real quick. So I'm just going to detach this. So I'll move some of this stuff just to keep it a little neater. So you can see now what happens is the charging circuit, if I plug something in, the 5 volt on USB is going to go to the USB pin on the microcontroller. And ground is uh, shared between these. Um, so what I actually want to do, I can't quite show it in fritzing in an elegant way, but what I, what I really want to do is have my um, circuit look something like this. I'll color code these so it's easier to follow. So I'll go and run ground from the battery directly in. <clears throat> but I'm going to interrupt the power line from the battery with my switch. Something like that, if that makes sense. So what I'll do in reality is cut this wire uh, coming off the battery so that, <coughs> excuse me, the switch is um, interrupting that line. So does that make sense? That's what we're going to build. Um, let's get to building it. So I don't see any questions in the chat, thoughts, suggestion, let me know. Otherwise, let's go over here and uh, 
unusual way the wires have been connected to the board. Yeah, so you might be talking about this over here. Um, let me switch over to uh, this overhead. And what they used were these crimp connectors. And these are actually, they're pretty cool. Um, but they are sometimes what fails on an Atari joystick is just these, these might get loose. And that, that's because you put so much abuse on the joystick, you can actually flex things just a little bit for people who really jam stuff. They're, they're moving things a little. So some of these, these are on good and tight actually. And sometimes that means the uh, owner went in and crimped those down with the plier, although you'll sometimes see some tool marks uh, when that's happened. Um, but I'm actually gonna leave these connected uh, and just trim them, trim the wires off of this joystick cable and then solder these directly into the board. So I'm actually going to leave that alone. I have another one that I uh, was playing around with before the show where I soldered some wires here. Um, one benefit there is that space is pretty crammed in here the way we're going to be using it. So we're, we're using up a lot of space here. If that's a problem, we can go to uh, silicon uh, thin stranded silicon wire which bends really nicely so that's an option we have. Um, so let's start off by and by the way you can buy these on Amazon or rather on eBay pretty cheap and these are original ones rather than like third party or replacements so um, let me switch to this view here and I'm just going to unceremoniously uh, trim these at about the halfway point so that we have pull this cable out. We don't need it anymore. Uh, one cool thing about these Atari joysticks is that they were very, they were intended to be serviced. So, you, th you know, any electronics from the 1970s and early 80s tended to still think in terms of going into a TV repair shop and having things fixed or having a TV repair person come to your house and fix it. Um, so if you look online, oh look, here's a loose one. I can see this. Let me switch to the uh, big camera. About oh, that one. Um, you can see this black ground wire. The you know there's a good chance whoever got rid of this at some point did because the joystick wasn't working and that joystick not wasn't working because of that little loose connection right there. So let's uh, let's just re crimp that on there with some pliers. Let's see if. I'll use some real pliers for this. Okay, I'm going to tighten it and then slide it back on. So you can see what that is. It's a little crimp grip. So just a little. Gentle tightening, and then let's slide that back on if I didn't make it too narrow to get on there. Oh, which I did. Ooh, look, we lost a piece. Okay, that one's definitely going to need to be soldered. You know what? Let's bail on this idea. You know what? Because I really do, I want to have a lot of space in here. Um, let me switch to this cam. Here's where the um, feather is going to go. I tried a few different possible arrangements, and the feather fits right here pretty nicely. It can be at a little bit of an angle. Um, let's see it here. It could be pretty straight, it'll still fit, but this is a hard sell right here. So let's go to, uh, let's go ahead and solder some silicon stranded wire on there. So I want brown, white, black, blue, green, orange. I don't think I have all those colors, so we'll have to cheat on one of these. Well, let's see, I've got, here's some orange, white, blue. What I don't think I have is brown. Here's black. Here's green. And let's substitute red 
because I do have that. And I'll use some really thin, oh, are we using yellow in here at all? No. How about yellow for the brown? I'll do that. I've got some yellow. Uh, because I will use, I will have some red wire in here that's for my switch and battery situation. So it's, you know, nice for clarity to not confuse things. Uh, so here's uh, roughly the distance that we're going to be going. So probably being able to pull this out to here and in is good. So this is like about a three inch little little piece of wire ought to do and won't be so much that we can't tuck it in. So like that. So that'll be our brown. Log back in. Boy, this machine likes to fall asleep quickly. It's because I don't have it plugged in. I don't think I have a power cord for it here today. <clears throat> Would using the EN pin for power on off work with this setup? Uh, yeah, I think you're right, C Grover. The, there's this enable pin on the um, NRF52 on all these feathers, actually. There's an enable pin, and that will cut power, power uh, as well as, um, or kind of put it into a lo very low power mode, I think. Uh, it'll do it as, just as good a job, I think, as cutting the battery. Uh, let's try that. I like that idea. That way, I won't have to mess around with the battery. And yeah, the, the, the good point allowed me to charge the battery via USB when the switch is off. Let's try that. I think that's, a, that's why that, that pin is there. And I was forgetting about that. That's a better solution. So we'll ignore what I did over in Fritzing. And we're going to um, instead use that little enable pin. Where is the, here we go. Okay. I hope I'm not regretting cutting these this short. Usually I try to err on having a lot more wire than that, but it's a pretty cramped little space in there. I'm kind of tempted actually to use the 30 gauge really thin stuff, but I don't have it in as many colors, I think, so we'll do this. And we need some blue and orange. Glad I came to the chat before I did that battery thing. Uh, sometimes if there's a lot of space in, in your project, you can use the little JST extenders, and that way you're not cutting the actual connection from the battery, which is kind of nice. Um, but not in this one. This project has really limited space. So. OK, I'm going to go to the close-up cam for some super close-up exciting wire stripping. And let's set this to, you see this little orange uh, guide, you can set how how far you're going to, uh, how big your, your insulation, the amount of insulation you're going to strip is going to be with that. English words are escaping me today. Here we go. Oh, all right, I'm going to hold that. That doesn't really work too well pressed against the desk or the bench like that. Oh, wow, this thing fell asleep again. Stay awake. All right. I'm going to the power settings. Stand by. Where is the energy saver? There you are. Display sleep is set to like two minutes. How about an hour? There we go. Battery is mostly dead on that. I just have this habit of using secondhand laptops, and they always have like a tenth of the battery life. So I usually leave them plugged in a lot. Okay, so let me switch to uh, this cam, and I'm going to get out 
I'm using these a lot lately. These are these um, magnetic helping hands. And I'm just going to tin these wires. I'll twist them up a little and then tin them. And then I'm going to melt a little blob of solder onto the pads of the joystick. I'll pull off those crimp connectors and solder these to it. So having these pre-tinned allows that to be kind of an easier operation. You don't have to clamp as many things down because you can uh, hold them together and heat the two existing bits of solder. That usually works pretty well. All right, let's see. Can I get... Uh, let's see if I can do this on close-up cam. keep it low. I think I've got focus locked on that, which is kind of helpful. This thing sort of wanders around focus-wise a bit, it seems. Looking for something to focus on. So, sorry, this is not like a cooking show today. I did not pre-cut and tin wires and stuff. I did a little homework. I made sure this worked, and I wrote the software, so I know that that's in good shape. The software actually is based on the software I used for the pinball uh, machine projects that I did on the Teensy. There was one I did with a Gemma, so that was in CircuitPython, so that was different. But the software that I used on my Teensy-based pinball controller, uh, I forget the guy's name, but I found some nice project that someone had done online uh, using the Teensy and an Atari joystick, actually. Uh, so it was a lot closer to this. Uh, originally, I just adapted that for my pinball. Um, but going back and looking at that, I was able to just add in the Bluetooth-specific stuff that we have for pairing. Uh, the sample sketches for the NRF-52 are great. It's right out of the box, very straightforward to pair with a uh, iOS device, the sample software I was using. I don't know yet about doing it for things like Raspberry Pi, but with the pairing mode that it is set in, you don't have to do any typing of codes between devices or anything like that. It just is a Bluetooth device that you can accept into your iOS life. All right, so those are all tinned. Um, now let's grab, I think it'll be easier to solder these onto the feather first and the uh, joystick second. All right, so I'm actually going to pull up the fritzing diagram so that I don't get this wrong. Um, I won't show that to you. I'll leave the cameras alone, but I'm going to make that real big on my monitor here so I can see this for a second. So we'll do, what is it? Uh, brown, white, blue, green, orange, and those are going to be in pins. 16. And by tinning these, these are, I think, 24 gauge. These are kind of fat enough to stay in there fairly well. Let's see if I can put them all in, flip it over, and at least heat it up enough to tack them on there and then really solder them. Uh, so white will go into, into 15 here. Uh, there is one pin on here, 31 that is actually in the natural order, the physical order on the board that I wanted to use, but that pin has, I forget what, but it has some caveat about it, and so I couldn't use it. Um, I was trying and it was angry, so I skipped across to 30, which is the next pin. Uh, there's my ground. I hope the ground runs long enough. Uh, this will be in 11. And orange will be in, this is the one I'm skipping across 31 over to 30. Can you get in there for me? Nope. Hmm. 
Okay, so what I'll do now is hold those, and since I've tinned those, I can just tack them on there a little bit. So they don't come popping off, and then I'll go and hit them again with more solder. Oh, uh, it didn't work. I've got some that stayed, some that didn't. No, none of them stayed. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that was a failed attempt. I'm going to grab my glasses here so I can see this a little better. And, uh... You get to watch that all again. Sorry, folks. All right, I'll do them one at a time. So this is going to be yellow in 16. And white in 15. This is what I'm trying to do here is use that. See, that made like a little connection there, enough to stay put. And then I can see that, right? And then come in here. And that is a danger with that. The honest truth is, I ran out of blue tack, <laughs> and I usually use that. Um, I'm going to grab some blue tape instead. All right, I'm out of blue tape. How about regular mask? Now, this might work. This is like this sort of pinstriping tape for cars. Uh, and so now, what are we on? Get the black, so blue for seven. So I'm just going to tape that down like that. All right, nothing fancy, and it works great. And I know there's been a few people on the Discord chat on other projects who have been yelling at me to use some tape when I run into these situations. So this one's for you, and thank you. Uh, now green, you're in 11. Sorry, I'll try to do this on the overhead. I have a mighty long piece of tape. I can get rid of some of that. And then we'll do orange. In 30. Is that the side that works? Yeah, the other side was never tinned at all. Okay, those look pretty good. I'm going to trim nubs of that for neatness sake. there looks like it could be better. A little light. There we go. Okay, so those will get soldered to their respective spots on here, but before I do that, let's work out this um, ground wire and how that's going to feed into our micro USB connector. So let's get, this is our slide switch here. I can move this out of the way. And, oops, sorry, I'm banging that on the mic. Um, let's see.
All right, back to that camera view. Um, the USB micro connector is this little guy. Um, I was thinking about drilling holes and using some some little screws, but I think I'm going to skip that and just use something non-permanent and non-destructive, like a little bit of foam core tape, uh, double stick tape, to, and I'll show you where this is going to go. So what we want is, pull this out for a second, here's the joystick base, and here's where the cable used to come out. So we're just going to have something like this. We're going to have our, our power switch and our charging port right there with wires feeding through that hole. Um, so let's do a ground and 5 volt line for this, which will go, make sure remember to put them through this hole here, and those will go uh, directly to the board. And then the switch will be used on, on that enable pin, thanks to C. Grover reminding me that that's a smart way to do that. Um, so why not get some, let's see, is that the ground I want to use for that? No. Let's use this. So I've got, here's this thinner 30 gauge stuff. I'll use that for this. No particular reason, but... That's the first piece I put my hands on. So those are going to run I'll go ahead and connect those to this board and then push it through the uh, joystick and connect it to the feather. So, so get some wire strippers here. And I'm just going to check the YouTube chat. Let's see. Videos. Make sure this is muted so we don't suddenly get an echo. There we go. What do you mean I've not done anything for 20 minutes? Please tell me that this is working. Oh, OK. That's just someone complains, complaining about, I haven't blown anything up or something like that. Okay, I was worried that you had a frozen image. Okay, so let's do, okay, for these guys I'm going to call in my, yeah, for those of you who are maybe just joining us, uh, we have a variety of video channels or uh, video shows we do on our channel and some of them we do live like this where we're just building things right before your eyes other times we're showing time lapses or pre-edited videos um, kind of like doing a mix of them but you're absolutely right when you're doing live builds of things some of it is repetitive tasks like this which we try to make as interesting as we can, and sometimes we get some great tips from people in the audience. Sometimes we share tips that might be new to you. Uh, that's one of my favorite ways of learning is watching other people work on stuff. Uh, Jay and Bridges ask, is that an original joystick? It is. I found, um, I think it was, tw it was great, good price. It was like $21 on eBay. Buy it now with probably $5 shipping uh, for a pair of original joysticks. And I haven't tried new ones, but these ones were built to last. I definitely, I knew that I would have a good joystick if I started with this. Okay, so I'm running uh, this red wire to the five volt line. 
on the uh, micro USB breakout. We don't have a good way without desoldering the connector on the feather uh, to connect a really low profile uh, USB micro connector for data. You see this has the data, there's two lines in here that is actually uh, data plus, data minus, and ID. Those uh, I'm not soldering to the sports, I'm using this purely for power, so this is not a case where I would be reprogramming um, this from the USB connection, uh, which is okay, it's not that hard to change your program by opening up the joystick, you'll see it's uh, four screws. Um, and something I haven't done is updating the firmware on the Blue Fruit devices over the air, which I know is possible. Um, if anyone has experience with that in the chat, let us know. I'm kind of curious if I wanted to change, let's say, key assignments. How, uh, how well does that work over Bluetooth to basically zap the firmware, it seems um, like magic a little bit to me that it works but I guess it has enough of its own um, code running on it to allow that. So, okay, here's our micro USB, 5 volt red, ground black, and I'm going to run these, actually let's put a little foam core on the back of that, and then we'll run that up through our joystick base. I won't set that down yet until I know where I'm putting the button. So I'll run this wiring up through here. And now I'll connect that to the feather. And this wiring is so thin, these little 30 gauge wires are so thin that I'm uh, going to leave their length as it is. I'm not too worried about getting, getting those shorter. Uh, okay, so red is going to run to USB on the feather. Right there. And I'm going to again hold this with my little helping hand. If you're wondering how that's magically staying in midair, because I don't know if you can see on the camera. In fact, let me give you the second view here for a second of um, that overhead. So you can see that here's where I'm working over here. Big finger or little finger? Um, so I've got one of these little helping hand guys. Uh, these are actually coolant nozzles and air nozzles for, for machinery, I think, is uh, where you see these normally. And then some people have adapted them to be pretty cool helping hand tools. All right, so there's USB. And let's run. Okay, so ground, um, I'm actually going to have two things running to ground. I'm going to have the ground plane from the joystick, so the center one here. Uh, I'm going to have a wire coming off of that. And <coughs> then I'm going to have this charger. So the two of these need to kind of come together and then use the same ground uh, port or pin on the feather here, because there is only one ground, unless I'm missing something, I only, I think I only see one ground. So uh, I'm going to take this thin wire and strip a little more off of it and just wrap it around an end of the thicker wire and then solder that into uh, the single port that we have. These never bend that well once you've tinned them, unfortunately, but the new parts of that should. Okay. Now that is a little fat. We'll see if that fits into the feather ground. 
in. Yes, pretty nicely. All right, let me trim this and neaten this before we do so. Shake a couple little pieces of wire that I had snipped off into there. That's a not fun way to short things out on your project. It's just little debris left over from the build. Uh, yeah, we can just come in right here to ground. Let's flip that over. I'm going to use the tape on that too. Where's my tape? I'm going to grab it across the back. There we go. fell out. Or it's just not very long. Yeah, there we go. I just want to check. Are you getting pretty good focus on this? I think you are, but I'm going to risk it and set that. No, that's worse. <laughs> I center it. Yay! Decent focus there. <laughs> Out of focus stuff drives me nuts, so my apologies. I know I should have a fan on, but I don't. All right, so ground is taken care of for our USB. Um, let's see. Oh, I will need to. I've got, I've got some space there, uh, the, the sort of a contact there, because I will need to connect my switch that's going from enable to ground as well, so a little thin piece of wire there. Let's do that now. So I'll leave that there so you have something nice to look at. Um, so here's my on-off switch. I had some double stick tape there. So I'm going to do a couple little thin 30-gauge black wires from that too. And those will run between the enable and the ground. So uh, probably a similar length of wire to what we just did will work. Two pieces like that. One and two. Maybe I'll go to, you know, I'll leave this in this view. But how about we set this one to workshop view? OK, hello. Uh, so let's strip a little off of these. So one of these is going to go to enable pin from, let's say, the common or center post on that switch. And one will go to ground. It kind of doesn't matter, uh, honestly, as long as one of the pins is a center pin. OK, so here we'll go. Let's do the, uh, let's do the the switch first, and then we'll run the wires through. So I'm going to hold the switch there. And again, I'm going to tin the wire and tin the switch so that I can join and heat them. It's the best way when you don't want to fixture everything. Or hold it with a bunch of clamps. Um, and the other way I could do this for you, that I do this sometimes, is just hold my solder. So I've just poked the solder into, uh, and then you hold your work, like this wire and the solder, and leave, or and the soldering iron, and leave the solder sitting there to do your bidding. Normally I have a lot more airflow in the shop, and the Solder fumes don't really want to jump up into my face like they are today. And I do normally use a fan, like I said. It gets a little noisier on camera. All right, so uh, now what we'll do is go ahead and join them just like that. So you just want to hold steady. Heat them both up. And I'm going to set a little bit of heat shrink tubing on those. Um, OK. 
that and that. Give, to, give you this camera for a second. How about that? Move this out of the way. And so these I'll run over the posts of the wires and posts on that switch. If you're just joining us, we are live building a wireless Bluetooth Atari joystick using a Feather NRF52 as the uh, Bluetooth microcontroller. And my heat shrink tubing is a lot longer than I need it to be. I think I will trim those because I don't want the, them to get in the way of anything. And I like to use this rework uh, hot nozzle to heat the tubing. It works really nicely and I don't risk um, overheating the solder underneath and detaching connections like you do if you use like the side of your soldering iron or a lighter or whatever. So I've got this uh, got this guy here. And I've got that set to 168 degrees centigrade, which is roughly what the heat shrink tubing says on the side of it. If you look at heat shrink tubing, it actually tell you what temperature you're supposed to heat it at. Okay, so let's go to this close-up cam. Uh, and now I'm going to run the switch wire up through. I think I'll put a little of the foam core tape on that, double stick foam tape on that as well. Um, you could definitely use different types of glues to connect that or um, try to affix it with a, a mechanical connection because there's a couple holes on the uh, micro USB board, but I'm going to go with what I think will be a decent enough semi-permanent solution without uh, putting any holes in the joystick. My heat shrink was a little too fat. Drat. All right, we'll leave that alone. Okay, so now our um, enable pin and ground are where we're going to connect this switch. So there's EN. Fold that over. Good. I'm going to get moving at a little faster pace here so we can get this up and running soon. And then this will go to the ground. So, like I said, the ground right now, I've got a, a couple wires in there already. I'm going to actually mount this from the top side um, by wrapping it around that exposed connection there. And pre-bend this. So I'm just going to hook that connection there. I forgot to connect that in the version of this I do on the guide. I will pre-wire uh, that little juncture there. But this is real time. And that's how we're going to do it. Good. And I'm just going to snip the very tiny little end of this so we don't end up shorting against that little diode that's right there, the little LED. <laughs> All right, so now our switch is on the enable. Uh, here's one thing I want to test real quick is let's put a battery on that and try turning on and off the switch and see if that does what it ought to do. 
Okay, so battery plugged in, nothing. Flip the switch, power. Great suggestion, Sea Rover. Oh, you can't really see the red LED. There it is. A little red LED going. Boop. Okay, and flip my little switch. Nothing, and I didn't have to mangle the batteries. Thank you. That's a great suggestion. Love it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, let's solder up the feather. Let's get this sort of routed neatly. Let me pull this camera up a little bit. Excuse me. That. I'm going to ask it to refocus. Yeah, see, Rover, not, nice to not have open flames, sure enough. Um, <laughs> I love your comments, guys. Witnessing the development, decision making in real time is very educational. Yeah, I, it helps also that I'm talking out loud and there's you to listen because when I'm in the shop figuring things out, I am often talking out loud to myself or muttering or doing little dances and stuff like that. So, um, so here's the here's the thought: battery will go. Uh, let's get him off of that wire. Okay, so battery will go under here. Feather will make its way over here. And now I've got to bridge all those to the circuit board of the Atari joystick. I don't know where they came up with the name CX40. C might be for controller is my guess. Um, so let me get another magnetic helping hand and I'm going to use that to hold. So this guy now, I'm going to remove all of these crimp connectors. They're gone. They're not so easy to get off some of them. Some of them are too easy to get off, so. Bye, goodbye. Yeah, if you look on eBay right now, uh, look up CX, Atari CX40. Um, I shouldn't tell you this because I kind of want to buy it, but I probably don't need it. That you can buy a fresh, clean uh, CX40 PCB like this in the Atari service package, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I hope that, you know what we're going to do real quick is going to test this with a continuity tester to make sure that those pads are good before we proceed. So I've got my... Uh, multimeter set to continuity mode, so and what we can do is uh, be easier if I could use some alligator clips. Uh, let's do that. So I'm going to clip the uh, one side to the center ground contact on the joystick, and then uh, these I can hold. So if I, if I hold, uh, let's say, that, okay, this one, this one, this one, this one. I think we're good. I'm a little nervous about that guy, but I think we're good. Let's go for it. Um, okay, so our uh, order here, I want to pull up my fritzing diagram again so I don't solder those to the wrong thing and have to change the software. So remember, this is our diagram. And I'll give you about that view and that view so you can see what I'm trying to do versus what I potentially actually do. 
Some of the uh, replacement boards, I think unofficial ones, actually list the color names uh, etched into the copper. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'm going to tin these pads on the joystick. I'm going to get a second holding hand, helping hand for that. Yeah, that's more stable. So just a nice big blob of solder on there will do it. Okay, and then Come in here, kind of left-handed, and let's get let's start getting the ground one to ground here, and life will be easier with some pliers to get my hands out of the way. Here's our stand-in for brown is yellow. I was thinking it would be kind of fun to get a uh, the female connector for the Atari. It looks kind of like a DB9, um, the opposite side of one of those, and just plug a... Um, plug it directly into the Bluetooth board, but then you'd have a sort of weird wireless with a cable thing. So I didn't, but it was an idea. White, yes, blue next. Green. And orange. Okay. Um, let's see. Should we test this? Oh, let's turn it. Yeah, let's. So I've got the software on there already. Before I close it up, I think it's worth giving it a shot. Um, so let me switch to this camera view for you. You could pr 3D print a mini Atari to mount the DB9 in. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I like that little base station kind of thing. It's a good idea, Beely. Very cool. Uh, so let me get my iPad. This is what we're going to pair with. my old school games folder. Uh, so let's go to Bluetooth settings. And Atari Fruit Joystick is the name I think I gave this one. I've had two that I've been playing with, so we'll, we'll see. Is that this one? Let me turn this off. Let's see if it goes away. Didn't. So that's the other one that I built that is sitting here close enough to connect. All right, so let's turn this on again and see if it shows up. Actually, if it's never been paired, it should show up in this other devices. Sometimes you got to turn um, Bluetooth on and off. See, where'd that other one go that I built? I want to maybe take the battery out of that one. Uh, oh, well, let's see. OK, 
connect. See, I think that one I named Atari Fruit Joystick 2. Hmm, turned on and in range. So, oh, this one might, it might have been connected to this one and the battery died. So, let's see, what's going on? Let me try it on another device. Uh, grab my phone real quick. This is just Murphy's Law, because this is the first time I actually had any kind of issue with connecting these. This NRF52 has been really reliable, actually, for me with connecting. I swear, I promise. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So I'm seeing two named Atari Fruit Joystick showing up on my phone. Let me turn off the phone's Bluetooth and see if that gives the uh, iPad a chance. I'm actually unclear about that. If, if a Bluetooth device is paired with something, does it just not show up? Yeah, looks like that was the case. So now Atari Fruit Joystick, it doesn't have enough characters to show the full name. If I click on that one, there, its full name shows up. So I'm going to say pair. Uh, good. So now it's connected to this. And the way to test that is actually, I'm just going to go to a text field and make a new note. And if I press, yeah, so the up button gives me the W and then the E when I release. The right button, D and C, and that's, yeah, that's acting really reliable, much better than that continuity test led me to believe. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, that's a good sign, yeah. So, uh, if I didn't explain it, the, uh, I explained this in my pinball when I was building the pinball machines. The way the iCade standard works is that it is uh, a set of pairings of a press and a release. So, you know, if you're, jam you're just holding a fire button in a game that allows you to do that, uh, it's just sent that one key and the software knows to just keep firing until it gets the release code of that same key. So that's what WE is the up button pairing. And uh, if you look up iCade standard, you can see more about it. Um, okay, good. So that means it works. I won't do a game yet because we'll save that drama for... Uh, once we have this closed up. So let's close it up. Uh, let me give you a view like so. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit so you can see. I don't think I'll need that. Okay, so put this into the view, sorry. So battery, I'm just going to leave there. You could probably foam core him down, but for now I'm just going to leave him B. So I'll route this battery wire over here. Put fruit over there. Let me turn him off. I really want us to give the uh, MVP of the game to C. Grover for thinking of using the enable pin. That was much better than the scheme I was envisioning. Okay. And that is good. That fits nicely. Okay, so button and spring. You can do this this way, like I'm going to try, or you can flip everything upside down and rest it into the joystick first. Um, maybe tape some stuff down, but now I've lost the spring into here. Come here, spring. I'm going to try this method, which involves capturing the button first, making sure none of the wires are in the way, and then when these land over their holes, they sort of drop into place. There's a couple posts on the upper part. That okay, that's good. I'm not pinching anything. Good and clean. Uh, let's tempt fate and screw it together, even though I didn't just retest it. Um, you can I'll turn it on. You can see, yeah, I see the red light in there blinking. So I didn't, again, I didn't want to make any holes in here, so I've just allowed you to peek in there and see indicator LEDs instead of um, bringing them out to the surface of the joystick, which I think works well enough. 
Uh, Yanni Turin, and yes, joystick uses BLE. So, so I've got the NRF52 uh, based Feather. So that's a Feather microcontroller that uses the Nordic semiconductor chip in it. And it's a really nice Bluetooth uh, chip. I like it a lot. It's been, like I said, robust and reliable. Uh, and I'm using the iCade um, standard and some Arduino code to communicate to any game that accepts that standard, which is actually a lot of them. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to need to tuck those wires in and decide where the power and yeah. All right, so I'm going to get some tweezers and feed that wire in. And let's see, I can hold this up for you there and get it in the light. There you go. I'll put on my glasses. Okay, so that's my on-off switch, and let me peel the oops, sorry, tape off of the USB charger, which is the one thing I didn't test, sorry. I may be the one who's sorry, but we'll see. And those guys cram against each other pretty nicely, so they should be a good tight fit. Press that down. Use my tweezers to press this switch down. All right. So there we go. I'll show you that in the little overhead cam here. Okay, I could have been neater about that. But I think that's going to work and there's clearance from the foot pad there. Uh, so now I'll be able to plug in, uh, let me grab a USB cable, USB power cable. And what I'll be looking for is a yellow light inside of there when I plug in um, the USB. And I see it. Can you see it? Yeah. So that means we're charging. Um, another thing you can implement in code, which I, I forgot you can until just now, is um, the battery s uh, status update. So there's a way in your software whoops, to um, check the battery strength, and then you can report that if you're using like the Bluetooth Connect app, which is kind of cool. Uh, so there, are, let's, uh, let's try this lovely joystick on some video games. So let me give you the overhead cam. Go to my old school games section and let's try an Atari game. How about uh, asteroids? So this is Atari 2600 asteroids. It's a very specific kind of asteroids, but. Yeah! <laughs> So, Atari 2600 Asteroids, you push forward to thrust, you pull backwards to hyperspace, oh gosh, and you get killed, because hyperspace always kills me. Alright, that's pretty great. I love it. Look, it's my youth recaptured with high technology. Um, now, I've also found a couple of other games that are... Uh, Pretty nice and use iCade standard, so Ms. Pac-Man here. With a joystick. Whoa, get off my case, ghost! Yeah. Oh, I just got killed. I got killed looking at the camera. I wanted you to see the joystick in here. So wireless, huh? What about that? I just walk around the workshop playing playing Pac-Man. Uh, I'm not particularly good at Pac-Man. Yeah. Let's go get some fruit. Yeah. 
All right, so there we have, let me turn the volume off on that. There we have today's build. That is the Atari 2600 joystick, the CX40, with a blue fruit NRF52 feather inside, a little rechargeable 500 milliamp hour LiPo, and we've got a charging port so we can recharge that without opening anything up, and a little on off switch to save battery power. So. I'm super psyched. I actually cooked one up. Uh, where's the other one before the show? So I do have two of these now. Uh, here's the other one. So I should be able to play combat and some other really awesome two-player games on here. We'll see. I haven't tried that yet. But uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll uh, hang out in the chat for a little bit now and uh, see if anyone has any thoughts, comments, questions. And uh, look to the Adafruit learning guide uh, for learning system for a guide coming up soon. I'm John Park. This is John Park's workshop. Thank you so much for tuning in.